Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I'm going through all the checks and certificates that you need to become a flight attendant. If you're new here, my name is Brie. I'm a flight attendant. This video is the last video in my five part series about how to become a flight attendant. I will put the links to all the other videos in the description for you guys if you want to watch them but a lot of thought and research went into this whole series because i really wanted to give you guys all the information and cover everything <laughs> to do with the application process specifically to australia but i'm sure that a lot of the things that i've shared in this series can also relate to other countries as well so i really hope that you've enjoyed this series if you have give me some love <laughs> it does really help my channel so if I've helped you in any way, please share some love. <laughs> so as I said, there is a bunch of checks and certificates that you need to become a flight attendant. Um, and I'm gonna run you through each of them individually. So let's get into the video. First of all, I'm gonna talk about reference checks. So reference checks are obviously when the employer contacts previous managers or colleagues that you have worked with in your previous jobs to learn more about the person that they're hiring. This is obviously very common. I'm pretty sure every job does this, but some tips with reference checks is to notify the person that you are putting down as your reference. The worst thing you can do is like put someone down and then the person who wants to employ you calls them and they didn't know that they were down as a reference. It's a really bad look. Just make sure that you are contacting people. Personally, I've been put down as a reference and I didn't know and um, I wasn't prepared to give a reference so I had to kind of just make some stuff up on the top of my head and if someone's doing that for you then they might not remember the things that you've done if they have been prepared they might better sit down and actually think about it so definitely recommend that and also send a copy of the job description to the person that you're putting down as a reference as well so that it helps them with their preparation as well and just on the topic of reference checks airlines do their own like reference reference checks so make sure everything on your social media is legal <laughs> and make sure that you are portraying yourself professionally and good on social media and LinkedIn and Facebook and stuff that really also shows a lot about someone's personality and about who they are as a person when you look on their social media so yeah just a tip for you guys <laughs> do that the next point that i'm going to talk about is a comprehension check i haven't seen this discussed much on youtube at all but i personally had to go through a comprehension check so basically it had a timer of 10 minutes and you had to answer i don't know like five to six questions in that 10 minutes and each question you had to read a paragraph and then you had to answer a multiple choice question um, to be honest, this was quite stressful for me because when I know that there's a time limit on something, it makes me quite anxious. <laughs> so that was pretty stressful. And I think they do these comprehension checks because as a flight attendant, a requirement is to be fluent in English, both written and verbals. I guess this is a way that they can check those requirements if you you know, can read and write in English. And plus through training is very difficult. So you obviously need to have some sort of good comprehension. <laughs> the next check that they do is a criminal history or background check. So obviously seeing if you've been to jail or you've been arrested or there's anything against your name. They do that because as an airline worker, you need to be able to attain an ASIC card, which is an aviation security ID card basically. And this ID card allows you into really secure parts of the airport. Another check that you need to get done is a medical check. So it's basically a physical examination of you to make sure that you're physically fit for the role because being a flight attendant is believe it or not, a very physical role. So basically for me, I got a list of um, medical centers that I could attend and I just attended the one closest to me um, that was designated by my airline. The types of checks that they did was like an eye test. They did a flexibility test. They did a hearing test. So I had to like sit in this booth with headphones on and they played certain sounds and when I heard a particular sound, I had to like press a button and things like that. You had to list any medication that you were on and also they did a drug test. So you had to pee in a cup. <laughs> that was my first experience of a pee test and like when someone's watching you and you're peeing, like to be honest, I got stage fright, like <laughs> it took me a while. So just be prepared that before going into those medical examinations that you don't have any 
you know, alcohol or drugs or anything like that in your system. Another check and test that you do is a swimming test. So what this consists of is you have to prove that you can tread water for three minutes. If you've ever treaded water, it's such a workout. <laughs> you also have to prove that you can swim 50 meters fully clothed. Basically what I did for this was I just went to my local aquatic center. I printed out a form that the airline provides you. Um, and I got a lifeguard just to watch me do those things. So those are all the checks and tests that you need to do before you even get the job offer. Once you get the job offer and you have a date for training, there's a few other certificates and things that you need to do before you start training. The first one is you need to get a passport if you don't have one already. And your passport needs to be valid for a minimum of 18 months. So if you don't have a passport or yours is getting expired, definitely put that into your budget for when you are becoming a flight attendant because passports can be very expensive. So yeah, you're welcome. The next thing is you need to get a first aid certificate. I did my first aid certificate through St. John's and they were really amazing. I really liked that process. It was basically a whole day from like eight to five and you learn all about CPR and about medication, anaphylaxis, strokes, injuries, things like that. So it, I found it very, very good and very informative. And the last thing that you need is an RSA, which is a responsible service of alcohol. I'm not sure if other countries have this, but here in Australia, you need a certificate to serve alcohol. Basically, I just Googled RSA and it came up with a place that I could get my RSA. It was like 50 bucks or something. I think you can do them online as well these days, but basically you just learn about not giving people too much alcohol that they get drunk and how much a serving is and things like that. And then you have to do a test at the end that qualifies you with that certificate. So yeah, I think those are all the checks that you need to do to become a flight attendant. Um, again, if you haven't watched my other videos, definitely go check them out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.